a patient who presented with a complaint of a gap between her upper and lower teeth on biting. Okay, she reveals a skeletal open bite on the cephalometric analysis. So here we can see in this image that a cephalometric analysis was carried out and they noticed that this patient has a skeletal open bite. Now the question we have been asked here is that who is the one who developed the cephalometric analysis that was used for the diagnosis of this patient? Was it Tweed, Jarabak, Rickett or Sasuni? Now Tweed is the one who gave us the diagnostic triangle. Okay. Jarabak is the one who gave us the Jarabak ratio which helps us to determine the anterior and posterior facial proportions whether the patient has a low angle or a high angle depending upon the posterior facial height of the patient upon the anterior facial height. Okay, The average value in Jarabak ratio is about 62 to 65 percent. Now Rickett gave us the Rickett's analysis which is different for the lateral cephalogram and different for the PA cephalogram. Other than that he has also given the uh, VTO which utilizes the superimposition of the lateral cephalograms. Now, Sasuni is the one who coined the term skeletal open bite and who gave the Sasuni analysis. Now, the Sasuni analysis is a cephalometric analysis that was given by Wiccan Sasuni. Okay. And he gave this analysis in order to emphasize the vertical as well as the horizontal proportions of the skeleton. Okay, so this was one of the first analysis which was given in order to emphasize the vertical relationships of the skeleton as well. So for, for this analysis, what he did was he used five horizontal planes. Okay, so the planes he used were the cranial base, the FH plane, the palatal plane, the occlusal plane and the mandibular plane. And what he uh, suggested was that if the patient has a well-balanced face, okay, then all of these planes are going to converge towards a single point behind the face okay, at a point O. So all these planes are, planes are going to converge at a point called the point O. Okay? If the planes uh, converge too quickly and very close to the face and then they start diverging again, Okay, such as in this situation. Here what we see is that the palatal and the mandibular planes are converging at a point ahead of what point O should have been. Okay, so they are converging closer to the face and then they are diverging away from each other. So this is seen in those situations where the facial proportions are long anteriorly and short posteriorly. Okay, so basically in those patients who have a tendency of a backward rotation of the mandible, okay, and those who have a long face syndrome. So this leads to the development of a skeletal open bite. So here the open bite that will be seen in the patient is a skeletal type of open bite because there is going to be rotation of the mandibular plane away from the maxillary plane. Okay, now the skeletal open bite is also known as epertognathia. This was another question that was asked in the previous examination. Now, if these planes are nearly parallel to each other, okay, such that they don't tend to diverge, so, okay, so in, instead of converging towards one point, if the planes, if the palatal plane is like this and the mandibular plane runs like this, that is more or less parallel to each other and they are not going to converge, this shows that the patient has a skeletal deep bite. Okay, this shows that the patient has a skeletal deep bite. So, this is how the horizontal planes were used in order for vertical uh, assessment. Now, how the horizontal assessment is done is by the arcuate analysis. Okay, so in the arcuate analysis, what he used as the landmark was point O to ANS was used as the radius. Okay, and using that as the radius, an arc was drawn through the ANS. Okay, and certain points such as point A, uh, the upper incisors, etc., they were assessed whether they lie anterior to the anterior arc, okay, or posterior to it. This helped us to determine whether the patient had a convex profile or a concave profile depending on the number of landmarks that were lying either ahead of this arc or behind this arc. So, this is how he uh, carried out both the vertical as well as horizontal assessment of the skeleton using the same cephalometric analysis.